Did You Have To is a proud member of the But Why Though podcast community. Welcome back to Did You Have To, the podcast where two bad bitches talk about anime. And here are your hosts, Kate and Nisha. Yeah! Nisha's quirk, stress ball. By internalizing her stress about the world being in chaos and crime, she converts that stress into a superpower, becoming a badass. Kate's quirk, waifu warrior. By just watching her favorite shows, she can manifest real or fictional characters into the real thing. They come to life and fight by her side. Not every character does it, though. She has to find the individual really hot. (laughs) Yeah! Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Did You Have To? I'm Kate. And I'm Nisha. And today, we're talking about the bad dad with a thick booty, Endeavor. (laughs) Did that work? Yes. Yes. Did you just come up with that? I did. I am proud of myself. I'm very proud of you, too. That is just very clever. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. We are talking about what prop would... Well, I won't say he's the most problematic because Griffith still exists. And no one ever yells about that man like I do. But... One of the most problematic current anime characters, I would say. So I would Not say much. also, so, well, no. So I think this is like a really good place to start is I mm-hmm. think the reason people have such strong reactions to Endeavor is because his evilness is something that can be replicated by people. Like right yeah. now, nobody be, can become a giant demon and just dis- and and like kill all of their friends <laughs> and like like griffith as bad as griffith is it's literally impossible to kind of do what griffith does he killed all his friends extent. because he was jealous <laughs> and he didn't confess his feelings to guts you know what this is not a griffith episode this is not a berserk episode i have it to let it not. go for now, until Henry Cavill one day plays Guts in a live action, like I want it to happen one day, or whoever, honestly, I just want it. But um, before we get into the conversation, I feel like this is great, like, intro, like, preview intro. But should we talk about anything in Today and Weeb? Oh, we haven't done Today and Weeb for a long time. You have time. a special announcement, Kate. You have do a ve- I? Yes, you have a very special. Yeah, do, you, do I need to say it? What are you talking about? You're going to be a judge. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's a thing that happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is why you get friends that gas you up, because I don't do it myself. Um, yeah, I I was selected as one of the judges for Country Rolls Anime Awards. I'm super, super excited. I'm really happy to have gotten nominated because essentially what they what they did was Crunchyroll put out a form and then they had people submit people's names and then uh they picked from there so apparently there were enough people who think I'm cool to make to have me do that and I do want to call out as much as I'm on there what I really liked was that this is probably the most diverse and inclusive like class of folks that I've ever been included on Mm -hmm. for I've never done anything like this before but like when I like when I was added to the Austin Film Critics Association or like when I've like ever done anything with other groups of people highlighted by industry they've never looked this diverse and this is something that I I really want to applaud Crunchyroll for and it's also something that I've noticed in my reviewing of Crunchyroll like titles Mm -hmm. is they're very open to receiving critique read my onyx equinox reviews um which we will talk about that show eventually um i don't hate it i just they shouldn't have casted white people in roles that's all i'm gonna say um yeah so yeah i'm doing something cool that's a cool thing thank you if you voted for me yes and, and also they're you. making, thank you. And also they're making a Yu Yu Hakusho live action, which yeah. literally just broke right before we recorded this. Yeah, I'm hyped. I mean, I'm hyped too. we saw last year what the um, stage play looked like. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want this in a movie now. Yeah. So well, I have a lot of faith in it because it sounds, it, I believe it's going to be produced by a studio in Japan. Mm-hmm. So I have which more is... faith in it. It's one of those things where, like, I'm having to be, like, the live-action apologist now on Twitter because people are like, why are you excited? And I was like, 
because technically the Bleach and Full Metal Alchemist live actions are Netflix originals, but they're produced by studios in Japan. Netflix just has the rights to them. Mm-hmm. So like, it doesn't mean that this is going to be another Death Note situation. And right. on top of that, like doing Did You Have To has really opened my eyes to understand the same way that like we adapt books and superhero movies, Japan adapts anime and mm-hmm. manga so like it, it doesn't mean that it's going to be bad but I, I do understand that a lot of Americans only have the access to like Death Note and Dragon Ball Evolution right. which aren't doing any favors to the live action anime genre mm-hmm. well like when we like again because of our show we have both learned that like you have the Kenshin series of mm-hmm. live action films Bleach We've seen Tokyo like, Tom- Ghoul was dope. Like Tokyo, Tokyo Ghoul, Ghoul, like the first half of that movie is a straight horror movie and it's real yep. good. It is. And like to your point, it's just like what is the difference between Marvel having the entire MCU and Japan you just adapting all these very mm-hmm. famous, very popular series from manga and anime. It's the yeah. same thing. And I, and I also so. understand too, because I feel like the critique or the push out, like, well, if it's an American studio, it's like, yeah, well, Alita was really well done. Alita yeah. was phenomenal. Like, Rodriguez was a phenomenal choice to have adapt Alita and, and do mm-hmm. it the way that he did. And that was an American studio that did it, but it was an American studio who did it with input from the Japanese creatives. And I think that like, so long as you have that bridge informing the live action, Mm -hmm. you'll end up with something good. And I also think that one of the things that's getting lost and I can understand from the perspective of like, oh, you can't remove like it's Japanese-ness from it. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I do think like, I know they have like that your name production has a thing has been yeah. in production for a while and people are mad that they like recasted characters and I think they're going with native characters but the creator of your name was like no I want my story to be shown as something that isn't just specific to Japan and I want it to be mapped on to something else and I think that there needs to be some grace and respect given to creators who want stuff done differently and we can't just come in with our American assumptions on things all the time yes I agree and I know what I feel like if more people could have that approach when it comes to these things, they probably wouldn't write them off and limit mm-hmm. themselves to a lot of, I think, and we'll probably one day need to make a list of like all the live actions we've watched and like, are they good? Are they bad? Yeah. Do we enjoy them? But I would say we've been able to find a fair amount of them that are good. And it's just like what we said, I've learned that an adaptation does not need to be a direct reflection of the source material. Mm-hmm. If you can take an original, you can take something from an original source and you can give it an, a new original story that does not fall in line or isn't canon, but it aligns with the source material. Like Kakaguri. And we have yeah. our Kakaguri episode. If y'all want to hear us talk about that, that that's probably one of the best examples of that. They're mm-hmm. like, hey, we acknowledge the canon, but here's an entirely brand new story that isn't adapting the canon. And it worked really well. Yep. So there's stuff out there. Just keep it, keep an open mind. Like we have One Piece, we have Cowboy Bebop that will be coming soon. And it's just, I feel like it's one of those things that people should just be more open to yeah. giving it a try before automatically writing it off. I will say sometimes yeah. I'm even cautious, but I'm excited mm-hmm. about Yu Yu Hakusho. So we'll see what comes from it. I mean, it's probably going to be what, another two, three years? Before oh, we- minimum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If we can't it's count it it's just in the, the announcement stage they didn't even have any artwork anything like that like I don't expect it to come out for a long while same thing with one piece like one piece isn't coming out for like another two years I think yeah it's gonna be a while I don't even know if that's just like that's how long production is and taking, then like or cowboy COVID. bebop yeah and then like cowboy bebop ended up stopping because yeah, Don, uh, Cho, broke Don Cho got hurt yeah which is a very Spike thing to do. So I'm very happy that he's taking the role seriously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, please don't get hurt anymore. Like, not that I don't, not because of the delay. I'm like, please, John Cho, you're a treasure. Do not get hurt anymore, please. <laughs> uh, but no, there's like other things that are coming out and just give them a shot. I feel like if more people can do that, that'd be nice. Yeah. 
And but, if not, you got a new movie to drink to. And that's in the end how this entire podcast got started. So yeah. if it sucks or looks like it can suck, we'll do a whole drinking episode for it. Mm-hmm. I got my bar right next to my little podcast studio. So <laughs> <laughs> just for this show. But yeah, I guess we can get into things then um, mm-hmm. and talk about Endeavor. So do you want to give us a little rundown about the character? Yes, I will give you a little bit about Endeavor. So Endeavor is a character from My Hero Academia created by Kohei, uh, Kohei Horikoshi, an icon, a legend, and he's going to be just as important as Toriyama when we're old and gray. Yep. Um Endeavor's name is NG Todoroki. He is Shoto Todoroki's dad, um, Icy Hat, um, if you don't know. <laughs> um, and he's an asshole, but yep. he's also the number one hero now. Um, in the start of the series, you see him have this really intense rivalry. And I, I, I feel like rivalry maybe isn't the best word because I feel like in anime, when we talk about rivalry, we're talking about like Vegeta, Goku, Bakugo, mm-hmm. Deku. And then you just have like pure anger and hatred, which is Todor- NG Todoroki and All Might. Um, and he very much wants to be number one in a, mm-hmm. in a very toxic way. And it manifests itself in uh, both emotional and physical abuse to his wife and his kids. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think it's 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 shown towards his kids, and I think it's assumed towards his wife. We don't know if he's actually. Do you remember? It's a gray area. No, yeah, because I know it's emotional abuse towards his wife, but it's I don't emotional remember abuse, and it's more like what we're told is like from their marriage from that point of view is that their marriage was very estranged like yeah they are and it was all practical yeah, yeah they were married together to blend their quirks mm-hmm. and that was it which is it's it just one of the things that I wish that we got more information on in the main series is the type of like eugenics behavior that would naturally come from quirks and like trying to breed better quirks and the reason so ng Todoroki endeavor his power is fire he makes a fire mustache and beard for whatever (laughs) reason um fire mask but he just he propels fire but his body doesn't have a natural cooling system it withstands heat more so than other people but he Mm -hmm. can overheat and burn himself and he can burn out and so he ends up up marrying and having children with his wife because she is a her quirk is ice and so the goal is to end up with a child who can both who can heat themselves up when they're getting too cold and cool themselves down when they're getting too hot and essentially have like this amazing power set that can't fail enter Shota Todoroki or Shota Todoroki uh, Mm -hmm. which is that character who is insanely powerful and I love my baby boy Bakugo I love that cinnamon roll, Deku. But I'll be honest, Todoroki would wipe both of them, and he has. If he wanted to. And that's the thing. All he if he just wanted to. If cement if Cementos had not raised the the state the floor in the middle of the stadium during the sports festival. Yeah. Ooh. That was it. <laughs> Deku was done. Recovery girl wasn't gonna fix none of them bones. Because <laughs> fire and ice just, and you saw the explosion of both impacts. So, like, let's and, and we'll have like Todoroki deserves his own episode because I think there's there's beautiful writing of overcoming trauma and learning mm-hmm. how to accept yourself with things that are handed down to you from people that are awful to you. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously, like we've done deep dives on Deku and Bahugo previously. We'll do one on Todoroki in the future. Um, but for right now, um, essentially, the way that we're shown Endeavor in the beginning is somebody who is just focused on perfection to the standpoint that he puts it in on his kids, he puts it on himself, and he is just like, he is not a compassionate hero. He is a hero who is just there to get rid of the villain and to shoot up in the hero charts. That's it. And it's very opposite of All Might, who has the strengths and take care of the villain, but his main thing is to preserve everybody's smile and to preserve everybody's hope. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so for the first, I don't want to say first half, like more than half of the series, Endeavor is just this specter of anger and abuse over Todoroki and kind of over hero heroes in general because Endeavor really stands as that hero society may worship heroes but your heroes may not be good and you see that yeah. first reflected in the first season when you have Stain when you have when you see him come in and, and try to fight when Stain comes in and you realize that Endeavor doesn't give a crap about anything yep um I don't know if you have anything to add for his his start yeah, because, like, I th- I'm glad that you kind of, like, emphasized, like, how he was introduced and, like, he really is, like, I like how you said, like, <laughs> when, how we're using the word rival when it comes to him, especially because, like, to him, he is, like, the opposite of All Might in the, when, when it comes to, like, what a hero is, like, what his motivations are, and it's made very clear from the get-go when he comes in because he's just all about, I want to be number one, I will surpass you, like, that's his whole motivation that's his whole, that's basically been his whole life motivation and I don't think we've ever gotten any like backstory into where that really stems from except like all we can assume is that he's just always wanted to be the best yeah um because I don't think we've gotten any specific flashbacks to him as a child like no. we, like all my all my probably had slight ones but they're flashbacks yeah. more so to give us insight to him becoming a young hero and him and his mentors but like we don't get that would endeavor and I think that's purpose Um, that's on purpose because yeah no I think that is purposeful because I think they create him as like again he's like the specter of like the evilness that the villain that can happen and still be a hero essentially because he is pretty much a villain for a lot of it he just so happens to be on the hero side um so Mm -hmm. I am not super far into vigilantes but I know vigilantes gives us more of Mirko I would be interested to know if we also get more of Endeavor when he's coming up Mm. because we have gotten to see like my I think vigilantes is kind of a necessary if you if you're not familiar with it my hero academia vigilantes it's not written by horikoshi but it fits in really well and the Mm -hmm. writer or the mangaka there is really focused on bringing to life the things that horikoshi brings in his work like there's a phenomenal aizawa arc where you get to see how aizawa became aizawa um so i don't i haven't I'm not caught up, so I don't know if we don't get it, if we get anything on Endeavor there. But no, they haven't shared any background on Endeavor. You just know that he has this giant chip on his shoulder of constantly trying to surpass All Might. And this is also where early on, when Endeavor is introduced, you have the comparisons between Bakugo and Endeavor, where you think that Bakugo mm-hmm. is is this toxic example of it. And he and when he starts out, like. Like we said in our Baku episode, he's a child. And yes, he starts <laughs> out that way. Yeah. Um, but he quickly changes. It never mm-hmm. changes less quickly. So after this ad, we're going to jump deep into the spoilers, which is going to take us past season four. So if you haven't gotten into season four or you haven't read any of the manga, this may, good, may be a good place for you to pause, catch up, and come back. She fights evil by moonlight, never runs from a real fight, and also has some really cool Sailor Moon gifts themed after her. This holiday season, if you're in need of a present for the Sailor Moon fan in your life, then you should check out Fun.com. Fun.com carries all of the great gift ideas, including collectible Funko Pop Sailor Moon figures, novelty mugs, and even some really cute anime-themed apparel, like the Sailor Moon Fair Isle ugly Christmas sweater, which we both love and have. Fun.com's awesome selection of merch doesn't stop at Sailor Moon. They also have the best selection of gifts, clothing, and toys for other brands like Star Wars, Disney, Harry Potter, Marvel, DC, and more. And if you use the link in our show notes, you can get 15% off of your order. So head over to fun.com. Yeah, so like as we get into Endeavor, so for you, where was the first time you saw Endeavor kind of growing past, or not, I don't want to say growing, but like, where could you tell that Horikoshi was going to start pushing into your redemptive arc for Endeavor? Okay, so I think the first time I noticed it was when we had the hero rankings, but I think it's really what happened 
because I can't remember what specific chapter. I just know it was after All Might retires and Endeavor is named the number one hero. And you kind of just notice there's a shift in his attitude, even like in his whole demeanor. Like he understands the weight of what number one means. But I also think it definitely, it's, it's like two parts. It's that, but then it's also how he was actively trying to like be in his children's lives, specifically Shoto's. And not in a way where he's just like, you're going to be my, you're going to be my greatest creation. Like he was actually trying, like there was parts in the anime where he's texting Shoto and it's like, you know, he's left him on red and he's like, why won't you reply to me? (laughs) But I feel like there was just a shift in his attitude and his character from those two points. What about you? So I think, yeah, I think for me, it's definitely after Camino, which is when Mm -hmm. um, All Might loses his power. Um, And I think that it's where he starts to realize that he is not the symbol of peace and also the importance of what the symbol of peace means. Because what Horikoshi is really good at is... I think of All Might, like Superman a bit, like he's very much in that model that Mm -hmm. was set up. And Horikoshi has spoken about how he has based My Hero on American comic books. And a lot of that is understanding the importance of symbols and what a symbol means, right? So like when you look at someone like Superman, the S on the chest is just as important as the man that's performing the act and it's what it inspires. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that when you realize that becoming the number one pro hero isn't just becoming a hero, it it is actually representing something for society. And he understands that he doesn't endear that same type of public joy and safety. Right. Like he doesn't make people feel that way. He is always seen as confident and embraceive and uh, abrasive and imposing, reliable, mm-hmm. but not the guy that is going to make you smile. Like he's rude and he's aggressive and that is just what everybody knows. Right. And so you start to see that he has this real complex in being compared to All Might. And as you start to understand, and for me, I think it's the episode, or because I I remember the season episodes more than I remember what manga chapters they are, but it's when they're doing, I think it's not the provisional license exam. It's it's the license exam where they're taking care of the kids. Yes. Yeah. And in and Endeavor and uh All Might are talking to each other and they have a really deep conversation about what they're watching the children do and how they're mm-hmm. learning. And you start and you can see that Endeavor is starting to change how he's thinking about what success looks like and what strength looks like. Mm-hmm. And at the end of season four, you have where he is, um, and this is where I'm gonna lean on the manga because the if you've seen season four of the anime, the very last episode is where he fights the Nomu. And yeah. it's a really powerful episode, but it's so much better in the manga because in the manga, you can already tell that he has been trying to make connections back with his children. Mm-hmm. And you start to understand that something has clicked for him that Endeavor knows that he can't be forgiven, but he wants to at least be seen as somebody who can not just be there for the people, but be there for his kids now, even if he wasn't in the past. And I think Hawks really pushes him a lot to that point because there's this piece where they're, I don't remember if it's before they're on the stage or they're, it's when they're on the stage before they start getting asked questions. And Hawks is just kind of like, yeah, people love me. I'm the number two hero, but people love me. They don't love you. They're right. scared of you. Like your popularity mm-hmm. rating sucks. You just so happen to be number one because it's where you were. And mm-hmm. it's this really interesting, um, like reflective moment where you kind of understand that being a hero isn't about power. It's about what you do and what you can bring out. And in the battle with the Nomu, you see Endeavor giving it his all physically while also having it cut with his children watching him go through this, his wife watching him go through it. Mm -hmm. And 
facing the potential that he may be dead. And one of the things that is really interesting is none of them really have it, it, it. The possibility of your dad being dead doesn't scare anybody. They're just kind of like, oh yeah, that's, that's endeavor. And it, it's this kind of moment for me, like when I read it, where you kind of realized like the pain that he had caused them because there isn't this severe like breakdown, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it, it's really interesting to see Endeavor push so hard with the acknowledgement and Hori Koshi showing us that he's lost that goodwill with his family and yeah. the importance of him defeating the Nomu and standing up at the end and putting his arm up with his fist raised as a symbol of hope is that he's, tr that's the moment where, you know, he's trying to go to be that now. He mm -hmm. wants to be the person that's going to inspire hope. And he wants to be the person that his kids can like actually see as somebody again. Right. Um, Cause I think, sorry. I didn't know what you off. I think because like I remember there's the scene where oh, sorry. there's a scene where I think Shoto is the he's watching it with his friends at the dorms and like he actually I think that's where it even clicks for him that he was actually scared for his dad because yeah. he he dropped to his knees and it's like yeah. that's where it's like it also it's like it's twofold it's like he still cares about his dad and he's like mm -hmm. trying to push him out whereas like I think it's is it Natsu that's the yeah. old, oldest son like he's totally just like you're dead to me I yeah. don't care I'm like you can go he's like you can go die old man like he doesn't say that but that's the energy that's, that's pretty much what off. he says that's the energy <laughs> it is it is and it's just like I think I like that the children all have their own like feelings towards him and it's very complex we're like their sister their oldest, the oldest sister is just like I'm trying like she's really been what's been helping hold the family together and it's just yeah. like it's Endeavor's realization of that too that he like I can't remember it's like a very brief thing and he has like a thoughts of their of his kids and he thanks her because she's like thank yeah. you so much for like being there and yeah. taking care of the home when he if he wasn't in that role like yeah, he like, should have been if you think about his kids the oldest son is so hurt mm -hmm. that he doesn't care at all yeah. The daughter just wants everybody to be together again. Mm -hmm. And Todoroki or Shoto is so hurt that he all he can think about is his dad. Yeah. He is so hurt that his dad has impeded how he exists as a person. Mm -hmm. Um like Todor like Shoto, what is it? It's Shoto is held back by his dad where the older brother essentially excels in spite of his dad. And then like, mm -hmm. uh, and, th and I say that like thinking of Shoto, like in the beginning of the series where like he refused to use his fireside. And even mm -hmm. now, like he doesn't use his fireside as freely. Like he does yeah. still contain it to a certain extent. He doesn't use um, it unless he absolutely needs to. I think to. it's more like yeah. a lethal, because ice is yeah. like less, Da like I mean it can be damaging but like he can freeze somebody he, he knows if he burns somebody yeah. it's probably related to the trauma he's had is like being a burn mm -hmm. victim that he knows the power behind like fire yeah. but this is not a shoto episode he will have his time um, but that is really important though because in the fight with the nomu um endeavor is scarred like he mm -hmm. he's he's hurt he I thought the man lost an eye he didn't um one solidifies my theory that scars make y'all hot. Because um, <laughs> Endeavor's <laughs> hotness factor went up like 25%. Um, mm. He has a scar on his face on the exact same side as Shoto does. And yeah. when they meet again, because you end up with uh, the our trio, so Shoto, mm -hmm. Deku, and uh, Bakugo, they all end up working at Endeavor's agency. And when they meet, Shoto says, that's a nice scar you got there. And it's one of those moments when you're like, oh, because Endeavor didn't give Shoto the scar. His mm -hmm. mom did, but his mom did because um, Shoto is half red, half white. And his mom wanted to burn the side of him that was his father to get to get rid of it. Um, yeah, it's very clear. And it's made it's not very clear, but it's made clear that she was not well. Um at that point in their life and like because and I, I I still want there to be more like I want more details on like their life and everything because I don't think we get enough and it kind of just writes her off as like the marriage was estranged 
she was in yeah. a loveless marriage because all you get is that she's calling her mom and saying like I like he's terrible to my children like how he pushes them and he's not even love a loving husband like this and that so it's like that's all we get. And then it's just made to us. We're just supposed to believe she just snaps yeah. and, fur- and burns Todoroki. And yeah. I want more details, but I understand this is a manga and it's not about her. Um, so, but anyways, uh, when you had talking about how the boys are trio, basically, which we would be remiss to not mention how like there's going to be a new movie centered on them coming out. It's going to be so good because the first movie, the first movie was just Deku and the second movie was Deku and Mahio. And now it's all of the three babies. And yeah. I'm very excited. I'm Three's so excited. Cool. So excited. But it's, that's what I loved about in the manga is like seeing the three of them being um, the mentees to Endeavor and Endeavor then being in a mentor which if you had told me Endeavor was going to be someone's mentor down the line when and we like first a met that good man, mentor a very good mentor and then you also learn he's also a good boss like yeah. he's he's not going to be like I think of it this way you got coaches right you got two different kinds of coaches you got the one who's going to come over to you when you like scrape your knee give you an orange slice and give you put a band-aid on it help you and walk you off you got the coach that's going to come up to you and say, are you dead? Get up and just keep moving on without yeah. you. Endeavor is the coach that's going to ask you, "Are you? Yeah. but are you dead? If you're dead, <laughs> still get up. <laughs> but it's like, it's admirable and it's res- and I can respect yeah. him more as a hero, seeing how he not only is a mentor to them, but how he interacts with his employees too. Because yeah. And I, again, we don't know how he was before this. This is us looking at him after he's had this whole, I guess, revelation yeah. of what being number one means. And I will always love Horikoshi's illustration of Endeavor's, ah, do we want to say it like, it's not that he lacks confidence, inferiority. He has an inferiority issue between him and All Might, where he yeah. sees All Might at like the, miles ahead of him. And there's like yeah. this huge even, goal. E- yeah. And even, even, even when All Might is uh, in his depowered state, like you mm-hmm. still, like Horikoshi definitely still draws, draws endeavors like this kind of like in on himself almost. Yeah. And it's like a very powerful illustration. I've seen it done and others shown it. And I love it because it definitely shows how one, how like you will see two dynamic characters and you think that they're on equal footing, power-wise, but then you have someone who's like, I can never catch up with them. And it, and they're always going to feel like that person, yeah. will, and they'll never be able to catch up with them, but they're still striving to get there. But like that's a very real thing. And I, I think Food Wars did it, too. And I know, like how, like, how dare I connect Food Wars to my hero right now, but stay with me, y'all. There's a great scene where I'm going to, I think it's, I can't remember all the main characters. I just know it's like a very similar scene where it's like, it shows you how characters can go on their own paths and go on their own journeys, like to become like better themselves. Yeah. And then you have rivals who or friends who start off with you, but those people don't always go along with you. And I think that's a very powerful thing because yeah. not everybody will stay at the same level with you and that's fine, but yeah. they have to overcome their own inferiority too. Yeah. And I think like one of the things that I really like is, now that I think about it, like as much as, so I do want, I don't want to learn more about Endeavor's past. I do want to learn more. Like, I don't want to know why he was an asshole. Cause that at least to me doesn't really matter. And I think the fact that Hori Koshi has really like set, like it, it doesn't matter. Like whatever Endeavor's done, all the pain and trauma Endeavor has caused, it doesn't matter why he did it. Because he still ruined the lives of his children and his, like, his family. And the fact, because, like, one of the things that I hate with redemption arcs, and it's one of the things that that people have really brought up about being against uh, the Endeavor Redemption, is the idea that you can perform one act and all of your sins are forgiven. And essentially like the way that we see this set up in the Endeavor Agency arc is it's just kind of like that stuff happened. Okay, how do we move forward? And so like, I want to know more about the stuff that happened because I feel like there is still just so much gray area. And I think Mm -hmm. after seeing Shigaraki like literally go through abuse, I think actually, I think showing what happened may help a little bit 
but it also may make Endeavor too irredeemable if we see some of the stuff. Yeah. Um, but, I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. And I, I, it's, it is a very complicated thing because getting um, Shigaraki's backstory definitely gives us more in depth to his character and his motivations and like who he is now. But it did not do it in a way that makes us say like, oh, he's not that bad. Exactly. And and that's the thing. Like, and and that's why I really appreciate the way that Horikoshi has Mm -hmm. grounded people that have done bad things. Um, And and Bakugo is not on the same level as Endeavor or Shigaraki at all. That's not what I'm saying. And if you think I am, you definitely haven't read anything that I've written about that child. Um, or I listened to our last episode. But what I what I said in that last episode, I think still stands with Endeavor is Hori Koshi has made sure that his villains don't forget what they have done. Mm-hmm. And um, he's made sure that any person who has done something bad doesn't forget what they have done. In Bakugo's like important yeah. chapter, in Bakugo Rising, in that chapter specifically, you have Bakugo remembering the trauma he put Deku through and shown mm-hmm. it from his perspective. And he carries that weight with him. Um, it kind of reminds me of that line from Cowboy Bebop where it's like, you're going to carry that weight. Like Horikoshi yeah. makes sure that all of the characters that have made bad decisions, that have done hurtful things, they don't get to leave that behind. Mm-hmm. What they can do though, is they can grow from them and they can yeah. choose what to do afterwards. And with Bakugo, he's not a villain. He's never been a villain. So it's a much easier trajectory. And he was a child. With Endeavor, mm-hmm. it's different, right? Like, yeah. Bakugo is He's a full forming full grown ass man. Exactly. <laughs> like Bakugo is forming this friendship and there is forgiveness there. And he's it's not redemption so much as growth and just forgiveness and doing better in his actions. And then you have somebody like Endeavor who is as we learn more and we we get to see um the Todoroki family dinner and stuff like that you learn that Endeavor isn't asking for forgiveness and he doesn't believe that his kids should have to forgive him. And I think for me, and I say this, like I do want people to understand, like I'm not making light of abuse. I am a survivor of domestic violence myself. I have Mm -hmm. been through it. I understand it. Interpersonal violence is not something that is easy. And when being used as a narrative trope, making it too easy to come away from that can belittle it. But I don't think that that's what Horikoshi does. Mm -hmm. I very much feel what he does with Endeavor is he sets him up as a man who knows that he fucked up and isn't expecting anybody in his life to forgive him. He doesn't Mm -hmm. want them to forgive him. What he does want them to do, and not necessarily want them to do, what he wants himself to be is someone that they can at least come to or see as somebody different. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, that's who I was then. Please hold me accountable. But also look at what I'm doing now and understand that I can be somebody you can be proud of. You don't have to Mm -hmm. tie yourself to me. You don't have to take my help. I just want you to be proud of me and the growth that I've made and the people that I'm saving, which I think is a very, very good way Mm -hmm. to build out a redemption. Because it's, I don't, because I don't like, I don't like redemption arcs and I kind of struggle calling it a redemption arc for Endeavor because he never forgives himself. Nobody ever forgives Endeavor for all the stuff that he did. He just tries to atone without forcing somebody to forgive, which I think is very different than what happens in redemption arcs. Redemption arcs is like this Mm -hmm. person. It's Anakin like murdering a whole bunch of children yeah. And then somehow being able to become a force ghost at the end because he saved his son. Like he killed that... one person <laughs> and saved like, his son. The that like that ledger is not equal. Like there's too much red in that ledger for that one. Um mm-hmm. he and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think and I think Hori Koshi takes the ledgers on his characters very seriously and understands what they're doing. Yeah. I don't I even remember like, where I started with that whole monologue, but no, no, it was it was great. I think it was beautiful. I feel like we should figure out how to clip that and just like play that anytime someone says Endeavor's trash. But to our point, I feel like Horikoshi continues to do this with characters and I love it. And I honestly love this trend of not so much doing a redemption arc 
and like, oh yeah, everything's forgiven now because you made this big sacrifice or like they died and gave their lives. So they were a hero now. Like, no, things are more complicated than that. And I think Horikoshi does an excellent job of doing that, especially because these are literal heroes that people put on pedestals and they look up to. But like, just like how people in real life do this with celebrities and your faves or like, you know, athletes, models, like whatever, people put folks and like celebrities, like people put pe- pe- these reg- these regular people on pedestals as if they are gods. And that's essentially what happens in My Hero with Endeavor and All Might. People look at them as if they are like just on a completely different level from them, which they are, but they are also human. And I think that gets forgotten sometimes. And I like how Horikoshi does not do this light. I don't think he does it lightly either. And I think, I like, I agree with you. It's not so much a redemption arc as it is like him definitely realizing that like he doesn't want his children to forgive him he want he does want them to be proud of him and even then he probably doesn't need them to be proud of him but he does like he wants to change at the end of the day he wants to change and be better than he was before because he knows he'll never be able to make up for all the things he did in the past but he does know he can start changing now which in real life if more people did that think we'd be in a better place yeah which is so and i found the actual panel and i'll put it i'll make sure to put it in the show notes of the episode the Mm -hmm. specific words to natsuo are you don't have to forgive me i'm not looking for forgiveness just atonement and i think that that's Mm. what separates it from a redemption arc because a redemption arc means that everybody around him is going to forgive him and he's good again Mm -hmm. this is just atonement like this is just him trying to balance the ledger yeah. With like, it's, it's no strings attached balancing the ledger. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, it's, it's what, one of the things where I struggle with when it comes to like, when people have wronged me or like, and, and I'm just talking about in general, but like even on an in-depth level, like if someone hurts me and they just say, sorry, and it's, just, you're just assumed, people assume you have to say, I forgive you. But truthfully, I always feel like forgiveness is not so much about the victim people make forgiveness about the abuser sometimes where the person who did wrong the person who hurt someone they want to feel they want to hear I forgive you because then they feel the guilt alleviate themselves but we never I feel like that's where we kind of see how we see that illustrated in in media like I don't know where I was going with this (laughs) But I feel like I feel like that's how we always see it, like how it's always portrayed. Like forgiveness is usually seen as a two way street. I said, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, you have to say you forgive me now. But we rarely get to see something where like this person's like, I'm sorry. And you don't have to forgive me. And I'm yeah. just trying to atone for everything bad that I did. And I'm like, that's much better. Don't make the pe- don't make the victims. Don't make the people who are hurt yeah. feel like they have to forgive somebody because they don't have to. For- they don't have to forgive that man. And yeah. it's fine. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's like, that's just, that's the nuance that Horikoshi has been able to really, oh, my mic moved. That's the nuance that Horikoshi has really been able to build into the character. And I think like initially I was not excited for the, for the Endeavor Agency arc because I don't like that. I don't, I, I, I don't like the slice of life stuff in my action shown in because I'm just like, this is filler. I, I don't want it. it to be here, but <laughs> Horikoshi doesn't know what filler is and it actually yeah. has a really important stuff to it. And I really enjoy the Endeavor Agency arc because I also feel like, um, what we what Horikoshi also does with Endeavor is you see the clear difference between Bakugo and Endeavor because there's a recognition mm-hmm. that they're not the same, yep. um, even though people are like treating them like they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of like because I forget who says it, but somebody says like I, I one of the teachers says they they put him there because people think that they're the same but they're not, and like he's going to show how he's different. Yeah. And it's also where you have the moment, like Endeavor as a teacher, I think, has also learned more in that, like when the boys come, the first thing he does is like, what do you want to learn? Like, what do yeah. you want to learn about yourself? And he gets to hear everybody kind of voice themselves and he pushes them on it. 
Mm-hmm. And I think it all just, it all just goes to this bigger sense of self-awareness where he's kind of like, now that he's number one, he's changed and like, it's not about power, it's about impact. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's probably one of the more important things. And I think that he's realizing that on a personal level too, because there's also the part where he talks about dreaming about his family around a dinner table without him and they're happy. And it's one of those things where like, it's not that he wants to be at the dinner table with them. He just wants them to be happy. And he thinks for them to be happy. It's not that he has to be forgiven. It's that he has to make up for all the ill that he's done. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, Because, you know, I like... Even I think it is part of that Endeavor agency arc where he kind of just like talk at, towards the very end of it. He talks about getting like putting a home, like having everybody move into a house and he's preparing yeah. a home for them for like the mom to come home to and yeah. like the kids. But he doesn't factor himself into that. Situation. No, he doesn't. He, he's not going to come and move there. He's going to stay yeah. in the house that they already have. And I'm like, yeah, no, he truly just wants their because fa- he knows like. He is the source that has like kind of splintered he's the family their pain. off. He's yeah, he's mm-hmm. their trauma. So like, he can't like, be there exactly. <laughs> like I feel like in a Hollywood show, the abuser would come back and try to buy everybody a house, and then like everybody would go into the house and live with the abuser, like it was fine. Mm-hmm. But like that doesn't happen here, and I think that that's just a very good thing. And I also think the fact that Horikoshi wrote Natsuo to straight up say like I'm not as kind as Shoto I don't know or not that he doesn't know he said there there will never come a time where I'm gonna forgive you Mm -hmm. like not I don't know if I can give forgive you not it's gonna take time just straight up there will never be forgiveness from me yeah and that is just something that I think is really powerful because you're right like when we see victim and abuser it's like okay well both people have to factor into forgiveness it's like no they don't you do not the day that I realized that I do not offer anybody my forgiveness was the day that I felt so much lighter and that is an empowering thing it is Mm -hmm. it's extremely empowering because you're taught as children that we have to forgive somebody once they say they're sorry and I'm just like no my forgiveness is mine I don't have to give it to anybody willingly, especially if it hurt me and I'm still hurt because just forgiving somebody and trying to move past it when you haven't moved past your issues is not giving yourself closure. But I feel like people always try to make it seem like if you forgive them, you'll feel better. I'm like, no, you know what makes me feel better? Working through my own pain, working through my own issues, working through it without that person being a part of it. And like knowing that, my forgiveness will alleviate them of their guilt and I don't have to give that to them. That makes me feel better. And I'm like, that might sound mean and spiteful, but I also feel like, no, it's more about you don't have to give a part yourself to help alleviate someone's guilt when they exactly. wrong you. Exactly. And, and and it's about that atonement piece. Like the, the, the person in the wrong has to work to make it better. And I think there's also this point where there's, there's a point I think it's still in the in the agency arc where in where Todoroki's like as a hero Endeavor is amazing but I need to see how he's going to be as a dad. Yeah. Because I can't forgive him for abusing mom. I can't forgive him for mm-hmm. what he did to us. So like the hero stuff cool dad, you put your fist up and you were as good as all might for a day. <laughs> but what are you going to do on the dad front? And right. I think that that's like It's empowering to see the victims in the story be given the space to ask for more and Mm -hmm. be given the space to just say no and not be pushed into a place of forgiveness. And I think that that's going to be like as now as we pull into where we are currently in Endeavor's Mm -hmm. story, it is something that's going to be really pivotal because um, and this is again, I'll put spoilers again, although this is a fan theory that everybody has said for forever. um, We're going to talk about the most recent chapters of My Hero Academia. So if you're not ready for that, don't listen. Here we go. Um, Dobby is confirmed to be Toya Todoroki. Um, I don't know how that boy's hair, I don't know like what he like washes hair dye out with, 
but I'm all for it. He's a white haired king. I'm good. Um, scars and white hair. That's what I want. Just um, bottled water clears it all out. <laughs> was it hair wax? Was it one day? Was he just hair dying chunk? his hair chalk? <laughs> was he dying his hair just once a day? <laughs> Oh, but, um, but this, yeah, no, talk about it because I'm just, I want to talk about Dobby's twirl as he. <laughs> I want a white haired Do- Dobby statue. That's what I want. Like, mm-hmm. I have my other Dobby statue, but now that I've seen him with white hair, I'm like, but I want that one too. I just want um, him twirling as a statue and just like with that very sinister, joyous, like <gasps> joyous, sinister grin on his face. Ma'am, I need somebody to take that gif of Kenya from Real Housewives of Atlanta twirl. <laughs> Y'all, please, somebody give this to us. Put Tommy's face on it. Please. Gone with the, gone with the wind fabulous. fabulous. <laughs> oh, because that was that moment. That was that. That moment, was definitely that moment. And I guess we should give them context for the moment. Like we don't have to do an in-depth. Like yeah <laughs> yeah it, so it it's it's been assumed by fans for a long time that Dobby's animosity towards hero or hero society comes from the fact that he's actually Toya Todoroki who is the son of Enji Todoroki who uh, we've seen his funeral or his um his uh his memorial altar, place and his memorial. altar yeah in in the house we know that everybody in his family assumes that Toya is dead. Not to hold a lot of aggression for that because Toya um, was presumed dead after burning himself to mm-hmm. death while training. Um, and uh, in the most recent arc, uh, Dobby revealed to uh, Todoroki and Endeavor specifically that he was in fact Toya. Um, we don't know how he survived. We don't know if like the scientist, because the, the working theory was that the guy who creates the Nomu actually mm-hmm. uh, created uh, or saved Dobby. Yeah. Um, but essentially Dobby puts together this video where he looks hot as fuck um <laughs> i'm sorry i Shocker, look, Kate. now that he's been confirmed as toya he has had a very hard life and he has every reason to Kate. hate heroes nisha Kate. you Kate. forgot in the most important fact i love him there's a there's a word for you dobby people and you know i'm not gonna say it here um oh but sorry go ahead continue talking about Jermaine yes. and how you want him to step on your back and burn you I do just like he did to Hawks his boyfriend <laughs> hot, uh, wings. hot wings um see we can talk about serious issues but there's always going to be thirst um and he releases this video where he tells everybody literally anybody with access to a tv uh, or any sort of thing that is broadcasting, he broadcasts that he's the son of Enji Todoroki and he pretty much just blows the lid off of the abuse that Endeavor put his family through. Um, mm-hmm. Toya specifically, but also everything else. So kind of like, it, it's it, at least from my understanding, and I don't know if you've taken it differently, but I've always assumed that Hero Society knew about the stuff that Endeavor did, but it was like one of those hush-hush things. Like, I can't 100% prove that he was an asshole to his family, but like, we know that's why like your kids are never around you. You're like, he's always alone at events, like, and that kind of stuff. And Mm -hmm. so for me, I feel like that, like Dobby was using that to kind of like, blow the lid off of the number one hero and now like everybody's gonna know his secrets and yeah. we haven't and so he he directly he reveals that broadcast and then he tries to like he doesn't try to kill Endeavor he tries to kill Todoroki in front of Endeavor because Todoroki is like the perfect he he was the perfect thing like he was mm-hmm. the the prize he's what profession. Todoroki want he he wanted to be what Todio, Todoroki is yeah like he he wanted to be and I and again I get confused with the birth order because I believe Natsuo is the oldest yeah it's not yes. Tuo, then Toya yeah because he was yeah it, no is it Natsuo the sister Toya and then Todoroki because 
Toya yes. was almost as powerful or was as powerful as Endeavor, but his body couldn't hold up as much. Yes. So yeah, that that's the order. So he's the second born son. He wanted to be that. He be, he wanted to be what Endeavor was striving for, and like you saw, like in the flash in Dobby's flashbacks, like how he strived and wanted to make his dad proud and everything, but he just couldn't. His body could not hold his flames, or like could not like handle it without burning him and him getting hurt. And it's like, yeah, you hate Todoroki because like this is your little brother, yeah. and it's like there's a lot of hate there to like be like, yeah, no, I'm just gonna kill you in front of dad. Okay, little brother. And just, yeah, he just says that like very plainly. And it's just so that whole reveal. And it's like, yeah, I know me and you, I don't think me and you ever called it on the show, but it's just like, we all kind of like, we all know he's Endeavor's son. Yeah. yeah. So I guess like the theory that we, we never confirmed it on here when we talked about it because spoilers and everything, but there was even the thought that at least for me, I thought Dobby potentially could have been like, you know, one of the very advanced Nomus that, you know, maybe the scientist succeeded and he took Dob- he took Toya's corpse and like he brainwashed him. But no, it's worse. No, this is just straight up traumatized Toya trying to get back at his dad. Like that's so much worse. So much worse. Yeah. And so much sadder because like at first thinking that, yeah, the scientist must have brainwashed Dobby. And like, it's like, it's giving myself the space to like, yeah, no, Dobby, deep down, you know, maybe there's Toya inside of him. Like, no, this is Toya. And oh, there Toya, is. That is Toya. <laughs> Toya's right. there. Toya's just also Dobby. Yes. And it's very freaking sad. And it's just like, dang, I feel for him. But the thing that he does to Endeavor's like character, like I guess in, in this series and in, in as a whole for this series, but in the sh- in the series that the world that my hero takes place in, yeah, he basically just dismantles it, and he's like, it's one of these very, it's one of these things where he knows that PR matters in the hero world. He knows that how Endeavor presents himself yeah. matters. So how you asked me before of like how I perceived it, I just assumed his kids never went to any events with him ever, and that maybe the hero world never knew about it, and he they, and that's just because. Endeavor was just very much not a popular, sociable person. Like he didn't make appearances like All Might. He didn't go to things for fun like All Might did. He he just worked and went home. But Dobby knows the the way to like really hurt Endeavor and to really like get vengeance is to basically destroy his legacy. Yeah, and that's the thing that is like fresh it, it it it's something that is really good and it's crushing because essentially which because I've seen some people like say that this was lazy and the way that like the reveal was done was lazy but the person fighting in this entire thing and granted like Endeavor is pretty hurt like he he has fought everything up into this point at 100 percent and he yeah like the, the man is on his last leg but um one of the shocking things to me or or one of the, not shocking, but one of the impactful things for me is in this last arc is when Dobby is talking, Endeavor doesn't say that much and Mm -hmm. Endeavor doesn't fight him. Like it's almost like Endeavor just accepts it. And and it's something that is, I think there, there's impact in the silence because a lot of it, like a lot of the back talk does come from from to, from Shoto and mm-hmm. Shoto is the one who fights. And it's almost in from, from my viewpoint that uh, Endeavor is just kind of like frozen with this like regret and fear. And, and I don't even know if it's so much about like, oh no, I'm not going to be my number one hero anymore. Yeah. I think it's more so just realizing that like, this is the tragedy that he can't atone for because you see him in the agency arc where he's like, he's kneeling in front of Toya's like altar And that's where he talks about like having the dream about his family and want like, and he doesn't know what he can do to 
to make them happy after stealing that happiness from them and, and, you know, losing Toya. And so I think that it's something that's really powerful because that was a moment where it could have been like, I never did any of that. What are you talking about? It it was like, I'm a better person now. You don't know me. I've changed. Like, no, he just, he just accepted it. And Mm -hmm. what comes from this is going to be interesting. I agree because like, I think every time a new chapter drops, me, Kate, shout out to Olive. We very, our our other friend who like we have our My Hero chat with and other people we each have our chats with about it. But like, we're just like, is this the week that Endeavor dies? Is this the week that Endeavor dies? Because like, we're almost expecting it because his whole character like it feels like it's come full circle in some ways, but like I, but I also don't want this to be his end. I don't want this saga, I guess arc. It's still an arc. It's not a saga, it's saga but whatever. Not getting into that details. But point is, I don't want him to die here because there is something very genuine in him having to live with this, having to live with the shame that's out there now, having to address it and having to deal with it in moving forward because will he just retire as a hero will he do damage control like what will come next I'm very interested to see what happens because I I feel like it's just one of those moments that like this could be will he die a hero if he dies here or will he die as someone that's hated if he dies here yeah so I'd rather him live Yeah. And it's one of those things too, is like, now I feel like Endeavor has to live because I was very like, so like I ended up in this weird thing where like, okay, if Toya kills, because at first I was like, if Toya kills Endeavor, then it's closing off and that's his final atonement because he let his son die. But then at the same time, that's not really him atoning for anything because it's still getting into the hands of a villain. And there is, I think it's 293, so not this last chapter that came out, but the chapter before it where, uh, like, Dobby has been unhinged before, but we haven't seen him unhinged like this. And the way that Horikoshi, like, has that shown is, like, phenomenally yeah. done. Um, but there is this panel where... Uh, there where Toya is hugging Todoroki and trying to burn him to death. And Mm -hmm. he's essentially, um, I pulled it up and I pulled it up and Todoroki says, but you're burning up too. And Dobby or Toya says, seriously, it's great that you were raised with love. I'm fine because I'm really happy right now. Cause look at that face and you see this picture of a very small endeavor, like beaten and just like hunched over. And then it zooms in on his face yeah. and it's just empty. Like mm-hmm. it's just compl- it's bloodied and it's blank. And then Toya writes, the guy's about to watch his puppet masterpiece burn up and die in a fire of his failed experiment. If he can't do anything, he looks totally broken inside. And so like when that happened, I was like, he can't die because right. this is like, if we talk about atonement in Endeavor's arc, mm-hmm. everybody knowing what he did and then seeing him react, like you said, that's mm-hmm. the real atonement. Like, how does he deal with that? Because as of right now, the villains are escaping because hot ass Mr. Compress, I don't know where the hell he came from, but he's hot. He's a hot face. So a hot face. A hot Um, face of that mask. God, man, like that That was so distracting. Like, poor Koshi does not know how to draw except the Mineta ugly characters well not only that like fucking mr compress is about to die and you give us this shot that and reveal that he's hot like right. how dare you horikoshi how, how dare you how do you know how much you? merchandise you could have sold if you had just left him alive for a few more chapters if you had just left the mask off but now like kate do you really want to never mind what am i saying of course you would want a statue of a man with a hole in his side and a hot face <laughs> scars nisha scars come on okay there's a hole in the man's stomach hey i don't discriminate um anyway but i do want to add to like 
what was I gonna say? I think we've said I can say all I can say about where Endeavor is right now because I'm like I don't yeah. want him to die here. I do want to see what he does after this because Dobby and like all the villains and like this whole liberation army thing, like their whole motivations to expose heroes. And like, it, we haven't even touched that and we are not going to touch that for a while on this show. I feel like until season six comes out, when this gets animated, that will be a good discussion topic. But there's just like Dobby's unhinged and just, I, it, it's the, it's Endeavor's face. Like you said, that's what I want to go with this. Endeavor's face when he realizes that he caused his son to turn into a villain. And it's not just like, cause he could, he lived with the guilt of his death. I think he lived, he always lived with the guilt of his death, but now it's like, you're alive, but you're a villain. Yeah. In like, no. Okay. Sorry. So I looked it up. Toya's the oldest. So Toya was oh. the oldest. He was their first kid. Okay. I assumed yeah. he was the second born because he wouldn't cry to Natsu, but never mm-hmm. mind. That makes Natsu the other boy. So that probably yeah. makes sense. Why? Okay. Well, Ooh, and then that hurts another level because that's your firstborn. <laughs> oh my God. Dobby, there's just like layers of peeling back from Dobby because that's like also probably, mm, I don't know. I'm going to stop there because this is not a Dobby episode. I just have so many more questions. No, there's a lot. I mean, like, I will say this, like Hori Koshi knows how to jam stories into a chapter because like mm-hmm. what we know from Toya is that he was kept from his siblings. He was kept alone to train. He was extremely strong, but he was also like uh, Endeavor didn't abuse him in that he hit him. Endeavor abused him by forcing him to go through such like really harsh training without any breaks and without yeah. any love or interaction from his siblings and Mm -hmm. stuff like that um and to the point where like they're like they show where toy is asking not to oh like i don't want to be alive like i don't want to be here and it what i really like is just overall i think by by throwing dobby into the mix by throwing toy into the mix even if it's like fan service for this theory, which I don't think it is. I feel like this was something that he had planned out. Um, it reminds us that we can't forget that Endeavor did shitty things. And it reminds yeah. Endeavor that he did shitty things. Okay. And and now it's what happens next. So I, I think that like when we see this fallout, I want to have another episode where like, okay, is Endeavor redeemed? Let's talk. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to see that because redemption is just like such a complicated thing. It's not black and white. And Horikoshi, I think, hopefully shows and shines a different way that redemption can be captured. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't, again, I hate saying redemption, atonement, forgiveness, whatever we want to call yeah. it. But like, I, I continue to applaud Horikoshi for like how they do this because it's not in a black and white way it's not simplified like it's very complex and it takes into account the feelings of the victims and it takes into account how the abuser is trying to move forward and and actively change without like washing away all of their sins and making it seem like oh yeah I'm a good guy now see guys I'm on the good guy side like and that feels more genuine with what we're getting instead so I'm excited to see how this ends. I just, I'm just i ready for this arc to be done with so I can just like... I need Horikoshi to get off of our necks. Please. Because I would like we've, to breathe. We've been down here for... We've been down here under your shoe for, so for the long. last six months. Look, Horikoshi, I only want to be underneath Dobby's shoe. So... You know what? We've spent this whole episode talking about Endeavor and I have not made one inappropriate joke, but you somehow <laughs> squeezed in so many Dobby. Also, Endeavor's hot. Like, like if you want me to hate somebody, please make them like not hot and thick. Cause that I man, can... oh yeah. my God. Like if there there are two butts in anime and it's Endeavor and Vegeta. <laughs> cake, 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 cake. <laughs> That man is 
<laughs> but no, that is also yes. <laughs> Don't make them broad, tall, and hot, and scars in a beard, a flame beard. Listen, that. there is a four hundred dollar statue of Endeavor, and his legs are tree trunks. I'm never going to get it. I'm just I I, I I'm going to have to win the lottery. I want it, but I keep stopping myself. I'm just like. I'm not that kind of weeb, am I? Four hundred dollars for a statue? Have I gotten to this point? My husband won't let me be that kind of weeb, so that's okay. Be that kind of weeb while you can, Nisha. Until a man be comes that, in. Be <laughs> that. No, be that kind of weeb until you have a household to maintain, in which you have to make smart financial decisions with your other half. That's true. It is just me here. I can totally buy an Endeavor cutout and nobody can make fun of me for it. But I've never been a cutout person. If you all listening to this really love us, you will buy us some anime body pillows. Yes. (laughs) Because, you know, I need it for my lumbar. (laughs) For my lumbar, wherever that is. Your lower back. What's a body pillow going to do for that? Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> also give us the anime himbo mouse pads with the big chest chest <laughs> yes i have seen the i have seen the boob mouse pads for overwatch male characters which makes me very happy I've so i've seen it for need, brawly <laughs> we need them to happen for more anime characters that's for, the equal that is the equality that i want weebs yeah that but boob also, pads for everything give me the man it would help if we could like we could justify these purchases before the show, that would help with our wrists when we work and edit, and I won't cramp up. <laughs> Is a titty mouse pad a business expense? Discuss. Yes. <laughs> man, t- man titty mouse mouse pad specifically Brawly, please. Syndicate Misha. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing we don't have an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. I feel like any closing thoughts, I feel like we've had our closing thoughts and we keep finding more to talk about Endeavor, but do you have any other final thoughts on them? No, I think I, I think that's all I have. I think this is a really good, oh, excuse me. I think this is a really good episode overall to just kind of talk about like, I, I, I do, like my final thought is that I think that Hori Koshi has a really beautiful way about writing characters who have done bad things. And I think that it is incredibly nuanced. Um, and I and I think I also think because it is nuanced and because it deals with that gray, you do end up with people who refuse to see any of the good. So you do end up with people who still hate Bakugo to this day. I won't get mad at somebody for hating Endeavor. Like you can't undo the abuse. Like the man still hasn't atoned, but like you still have to understand that like at least with the way, what I respect for Horikoshi's writing of Endeavor is that we're not expected to forgive Endeavor. The kids aren't expected to forgive Endeavor and his, like the impact and the trauma he's caused is never going to magically go away. And I think that that's something really important and something that more writers, whether manga or otherwise, need to think about and need to understand is that that trauma doesn't erase just because your character did one small good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's my closing thoughts. Hori Thanks. Koshi deserves everything. I want Hori Koshi to get all the awards. I don't know specifically what manga awards there are. Um, I feel like the Peabody. That's a a, a writing award, right? <laughs> <laughs> you we nominate have, a manga. You could have Googled at least. I mean, I just I figured you know I me. Mean, you're the Googler. I'm the throw offer, and then you go look it up for me. <laughs> That's how this show works and people love it. But okay, as Kate Googles it. <laughs> um, so there are the Akatsuka Award, which is a new manga artist, the Bunji Shunjo Manga Award, Dengeki Comic Grand Prix. 
International Manga Award, which is given by the Minister of Foreign Affairs Japan, but to non-Japanese manga artists. Hmm. Japan Cant- Cartoonist Association Award, Kodansha Manga Award, Manga Taisho. So Manga Taisho is the one that I know. That, that's like a, a thing. Okay or a, a bigger one, um, the Seiyun Award, which is specifically for science fiction manga, uh, Shogakukan Manga Award, which is just, it's from that specific publisher, Sugoi Japan Award, which is manga, anime, light novel, entertainment novels, the Tezuka Award, which is manga, and Tezuka Sama Cultural Prize, which is also manga. So all those awards, except for the newcomer one, he should get. And, <laughs> and the one that's for non-Japanese um, man- manga cause. Um, I just say he deserves something. Like, it, it's been a masterpiece. And I think Endeavor really is a prime of example in the standard of what more people should strive to do if you're going to write a character who's done wrong and who is problematic to show how change is possible and what that change looks like for the character without erasing all the bad and terrible things they did. And I I want to see that be the standard because I feel like that's what I expect now when I see a character who did something wrong and if they are, want to make them seem like they're not just evil, but like they are changing, seeing that change in like the action behind it should be a requirement now yeah. when we talk about these kind of characters. So yeah. yeah. I will say, um, because I'm the Googler, um, he has been nominated for a Manga Taisho Award in 2015, which he lost. He was nominated for the Kodansha Manga Award for Best Shonen Manga, which he lost in 2016. 2017, he was nominated for the uh, Angoulême International Comics Festival. So that is in French. That in France, that's actually a really big one for best youth comic, but he lost. Um, 2017, same year, he won the Sugoi oh. Japan Award for best manga. And in 2018, he lost, but was nominated for the American Award, which is the Harvey Award, which is for uh, best manga. Um, but he he lost that one. But in 2019, the 31st Harvey Award, Kohei Horikoshi won. Yay. So he has two awards. Give him more. Okay. Give him more. <laughs> Give him all of them. I don't care. It's beautiful. They're doing beautiful, beautiful work. Um, but yeah, with that, I think that brings an end to our show. Kate, I guess, take us on out. Where can they find us? Yeah, you can find the show at DYHT underscore pod. And if you want to help support us a little bit more, head on over to patreon.com slash but why the B-T-W-H-Y-T-H-O where you get access at the $1 level to Manga Trash where we talk about smutty things and trashy manga, which is smutty things. Um, and then you can find me at Oh My Myth Randier on Twitter. And you can also find me on Twitter at Nisha Plays. That's N E Y S H J P L A Y S. I don't know why I have to pause there. But yeah, and with that, will Endeavor ever truly redeem himself? Have your thoughts on Endeavor changed after listening to us talk about him? And will I ever get Kate to watch One Piece? Kate? <laughs> Kate? No. You gonna watch One Piece? No, not yet. I mean, I will. I mean, I saw that damn clip of Zoro <laughs> taking on all of Luffy's pain, and it was really impactful. But that, there's so many. Stuff. There's so many. Don't Nisha. think about the number. Think about the journey. <laughs> Ma'am. It's not about the number of episodes. It's about the journey you go on with the crew. It's about the friends I make along. She, you can't see her because this is an audio podcast, but she's she's showcasing her, her straw hat hoodie to the camera. Yeah, this crew on the sleeve. You're too far gone, ma'am. I, <laughs> Take us out. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>
Did You Have To? is co-produced by Kate Sanchez and Lanisha Campbell. Our intro is done by Dr. Emery Stephen Daniel. And our outro and intro music is by Benjamin Tissot, a.k.a. Ben Sound.